Welcome to week four of Explore the Bible, continuing now in Philippians. We're in chapter three of Philippians today and looking forward to this study. Hey, before we go any farther, I just want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Uh, like the video, share it with others, comment on it. Let us know how God's using this in your life and how it's helping you or questions that you have or whatever. We really appreciate you watching. I'm really thankful that you're doing that. Well, let's dive into Philippians chapter 3. Some great, great verses here. But everything that was a gain to me, I have considered to be a loss because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ, Jesus, my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I consider them as dung, so that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ, a righteousness from God based on faith. Man, powerful, powerful verses. Uh, Paul was a, a man who had a lot. He, he was uh, influential. He was smart. He was probably fairly wealthy. He, he had good position. He had a good future. And uh, he gave all that up to follow Christ. He sacrificed all of it to follow Christ. And I think most of us need to look at that and, and realize that we most of us haven't given up anything. In some ways, we didn't lose anything. If you were born into a Christian home, you didn't lose anything to follow Christ. That was Everybody was happy. They celebrated. But we have to think about, you know, there are things that, that we need to maybe be willing to let go of, right? Willing to lay down if that's required of us to follow Christ. What is it that we have sacrificed? He says, everything that was a gain to me, everything that I counted in the positive side of my spiritual account, you know, I've got, we've got the things or the sins. These are the negative side. But we've got the good stuff, the positive side. All these things, well, those things were a loss because of Christ. I, all that stuff, who cares? It was no good to me. It didn't help me get to Christ. Right? More than that, I consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Here is the value. The value is knowing Christ. So everything, whatever I had, it was all lost. Because of him, I've suffered the loss of all things. And I consider that stuff as dung. Okay, we need to have a, you know, you can Google that word if you don't know what that means. So that I, uh, Paul's being very explicit here, okay? So that I may gain Christ and be found in him. This is what I want. I want Christ. And all of that stuff, who cares what it is? It's useless to me. It's trash to me. If it kept me from Christ, it is certainly trash to me. I, I want I need Christ and I'll be gladly give all that up. Gladly he gave it all up, right? To be found in him, not having this righteousness of my own from the law. That's what he had before. This everything that he had that was a gain. He had a, his own righteousness, his self righteousness, right? His own looking and seeing the good things that he had done and the way he was checking off the boxes, all the things he was supposed to be doing. He he says, I I, want, I, I don't have that. What I have is a righteousness that comes from God that's based on my faith and my trust in him. This is the righteousness that I have. This, oh, this is what I want. This is, he says, this is all I need. This is it. Let's go on. My goal is to know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead. This this passage, verse chapter 3, 10 and 11, is I think, I mean, we could just spend all day right here. Okay, this is extremely challenging, extremely challenging. Okay, the first part, not so much. My goal is to know him. I want to know God. I want to know Christ. I want to know, I want to understand him. I want to gain a full appreciation of who he is and what he's done and what he wants to do in me and all that he is in, in creation. I want to know all of that, right? And I want to know the power of his resurrection. Yes, Lord, I want to know the power of your resurrection. I want to know the, the power displayed when he rose Christ. He raised him up from the dead. That power that could raise a dead person into eternal life. I mean, this is more than uh, dividing the Red Sea. This is more than the power of creation. This is raising a dead person to new life. I want to know that power, right? 
and the fellowship of his sufferings. Oh, this is where it starts to get challenging. This first day, yeah, I want to know him. I want to know the power, right? I want to know the fellowship of his sufferings. I want to. I want to have fellowship with him in suffering to to suffer on his behalf uh, for his name's sake to go through hardship and difficulty. This is not 21st century um, American Christianity for most of us, right? Most people that want a you know health, wealth, and prosperity gospel. This is this verse is not in your passage. The first two parts, but then you just stop right there, right? I want to know the fellowship of his sufferings. Paul says, I, I, want to, I want to experience all, all of the Christian life. I want to experience all of it. And just a, a quick sidelight here. You know, um, one of the things about um, taking uh, drugs or alcohol or whatever is kind of a self-medication or um, running from hardship it is an unwillingness to experience the depth of life, right? Paul is saying here, I want to experience all of the depth of life. I don't want my emotions in any way to be protected or or, or my uh, to be muted so that I don't feel it. I want to I want to experience all of what it means to follow Christ. be conformed to his death assuming that somehow I'll reach resurrection knowing you know I'm going to be raised from the dead so if I, if I need to die I want to die I want to experience all of this it's a challenge isn't it I mean it's easy to say I want to know Jesus and I want to know the power it's a whole other thing to say let me experience everything that it meant to be him I, I'm willing I want to know that. My goal, my goal. Right? Brothers and sisters, I don't consider myself taking hold of it yet. I, I'm not there yet, he says. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward for what is ahead, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. You're going to love this. Forgetting what is behind, going forward, right? Putting this, reaching, reaching, reaching for what is ahead, reaching out striving, wanting, straining for what is in front of me, forgetting what is behind. Listen, there's a need to not live in the past, right? Not that we don't celebrate our past and we acknowledge it, but, but we go forward. We are looking forward. We are wanting more. We're straining for what is in front of us. This is what matters, not what is behind us, but what is in front of us. What is behind us is, um, the sins should not hold us back. We forget them. The victories should not keep us from wanting more. We forget those victories if they're holding us back. They may encourage us, and in that case, we'll, we'll hang on to them for the sense of encouragement, but we'll never hang on to them for the sense of, well, I've done it already. Right? We're reaching for what is ahead. Pursue the prize promised by God's heavenly call. I am going forward. I'm looking for what God has for me next. In any case, he says, we should live up to whatever truth we have attained, Join in imitating me, brothers and sisters, and pay careful attention to those who live according to the example you have in us. Okay, I wanted to include this one today just because of this. There may be there's some confusion here. We should live up to whatever truth we have attained. Okay, Paul is saying that that wherever you are, we'll go back here. He says, you know, I'm not there yet, right? I haven't I'm I haven't gotten there yet. So wherever you are in this in this. Um, trek this journey of sanctification of becoming like christ you live up to what you know you do what you know to do now you may realize in five years that there were things you should have been doing then but you didn't know that okay but now you know it you live up to that now you do that now wherever you are you live up to what you have learned and how you, the the truth that you have attained what you have learned and grown in you live up to that always right but then we're we're looking and imitating Paul says, imitate me, you know, follow me, go on my path. Well, I tell you what, we, we, Paul's not a bad example to follow, but you know, we also ought to be people that others can follow. And we ought to be willing to say to them, hey, follow me, 
Come after me. You can do, you know, see how I'm living. See how I'm going through this. Join in with this, right? But not everybody is worthy of following. There are some that are leading you astray. And he says to them, their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is their shame. They're focused on earthly things. Some people are here, right? Don't follow them. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly wait for a Savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ, he will transform the body of our humble condition into the likeness of his glorious body by the power that enables him to subject everything to himself. We look forward to one day, the return of Christ. He will come from heaven, he will come for us, and he'll transform us, and he'll change everything. And until then, we live the best that we know. We follow him everything that we know we do and we follow eagerly joyfully following after Christ. I hope this has helped as you study. It's a great passage. There's so much there. I just couldn't get to all of it like I really wanted to, but but God bless you. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel, like, share, and let other people know. Comment on us. Let us know how God's using this in your life. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.